full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Open the pod bay doors, now. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Cinemates, a podcast where a bunch of mates chat about cinema over some drinks. Today, I'm joined by my two mates, Spencer and Charlie. Thanks for coming on, boys. How are you both? Fantastic. Good morning. Very good, Michael. <laughs> good. Glad to have you on. Very keen. Today, we've got a very special episode. We're going to be diving into the final Daniel Craig Bond film that has recently come out, No Time to Die, directed by Kerry Fukunaga. It was meant to come out in 2019. It's finally come out this year and finally here in Australia after much anticipated wait. So in true James Bond fashion, we're currently dressed in suits. I know we don't film these, <laughs> yep. but trust us, we're wearing full tuxedos. <laughs> what are you um, wearing today, Michael? Uh, I'm wearing a Hugo Boss today, Charlie. <laughs> uh, this is not an ad, um, but we're also <laughs> drinking martinis as well. So um, this one is for Daniel Craig. So let's get into it. Uh, so as we know, if you've listened to the podcast before, on the Cinemates podcast, we like to start off uh, by hearing from the guests because everyone has different uh, perspectives and tastes on movies and TV shows. So I like to start these with a question game for each guest. So uh, we've changed it up slightly, but we've still got some divisive questions to start with and then some deeper ones uh, later on. So first question, I'll start with you, Spencer. First question, Christopher Nolan or Martin Scorsese? Okay, this is incredibly <laughs> tough. Well, not really because obviously Scors- Scorsese's had an illustrious career. Indeed. But Nolan wins by a landslide in my books. Yeah. If I had to live the rest of my life watching one of their movies, I would watch Nolan every time. That is a really hot take. I definitely agree. It's mm. um, it's a it's a tough battle there, but um you know, Nolan, he's, he's just getting started. Undefeated. Uh, Charlie, what do you think? Nolan or Scorsese? Man, it is a tough one, but um, I had to decide with Scorsese on this one. Mm. Just based on the amount of, I suppose, range, mm. you know, you've got with Scorsese crime dramas like Goodfellas and yeah. The Departed, and then you've got thrillers like Cape Fear and Shutter Island, and then you've got more comedic films like Wolf of Wall Street. So that yeah. range is there. Mm. Um I love Christopher Nolan, don't get me wrong, but yeah. I think the body of work definitely sides with Scorsese on yeah. that one. I can't imagine Nolan would be doing a comedy no, soon. No, you just couldn't Maybe imagine. with Will Ferrell. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Nolan>. <laughs> the funniest man known yeah. to, hit, known to history. <laughs> oh, easily. Go on, no. um, next question, uh, Spencer, back to you. Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones? For me, this is Game of Thrones. Mm. And I actually went and rewatched the last season this year. Mm. <sighs> what did you think of the last season? And... <laughs> It's not as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> I feel like when it was coming out live, you'd kind of watch the episode and then you'd go on YouTube and watch for a week theories mm. that you wish would happen. Yeah. And they didn't. So that's why you were just disappointed. And I yeah. think that last season actually ties it up really yeah. well. Mm. Okay. Nice. Great point. Charlie, Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones? Man, I went with um, Game of Thrones as well. I personally grew up with Game of Thrones. Mm. Um, it was one of those shows that, you know, every single season we were on the edge of our, of our seat anticipating. Um, I know Sparrow and I went to boarding school and yeah. we'd get the Game of Thrones on our laptops and just like streaming it nonstop, binging. So good. Um, so, but yeah, like Spence says, it was not too bad of the last season. That broke my heart. Honestly, yeah. it, it broke my heart. To put it simply, <laughs> tearing it up. It was John Snow, horrendous. the greatest. <laughs> uh, next question: Tom Hanks or Leonardo Leo DiCaprio? DiCaprio? Oh man, it's not a question. <laughs> what do you mean? Tom Leonardo. Hanks is great. Leonardo, uh, man, catch me if you can. Where they both perform, yep. but yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah it's no, a great it's, movie. it's it's a Leo from me, man. Um, I spoke about Scorsese before. Um, yep. They're long-time collaborators, obviously, mm. and I think they bring the best out of each other. Um, for the listeners, if you haven't seen The Aviator, go see it. Mm. Um, I haven't seen that. Man, it Very is my favourite Leo performance. Potential elevator pitch. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, could be. yeah. Could be. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but it's Leo from me, man. Okay. He's, uh, he's unbelievable. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big Tom Hanks man myself. Yep. Uh, but I do appreciate both. They're some of the best uh, currently in the industry. Uh, next question, Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter? Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry Potter. I think um, just takes the – I mean, they're both adaptions, obviously. I think yeah. Harry Potter just absolutely nailed it. Also, it was made later, so I think the visual effects are way better, which kind of adds mm, it for me. That's a good point. Um, yeah. Mm, yeah. I, um, I'm not a massive fan of either. I know for the lockdown that's just passed – my Mrs. Lauren is a massive Harry Potter fan and I've rewatched I watched every movie probably twice in mm. Harry Potter series. So yeah. um just based off that I would go with Harry Potter. But yeah, like Spo said, visual effects, hundred yeah. percent. I think as well, like we grew up as Harry Potter was coming out, yeah. so it kind of helped. Whereas, you know, Lord of the Rings um finished in two thousand and three or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Um both great series. Next question, Friends or How I Met Your Mother? I haven't seen either of them. <gasps> Wow, yeah, this that is, is absurd. This is terrible. Have you been living under a <laughs> rock? I am, I am That's just, actually d- disgraceful. I know, and I'm just not a sitcom person. I don't know why. I asked like a group chat the other day, what should I watch? So I watched the first episode of Seinfeld last night and that's How what I'll be binging. It's actually in my notes. There Pretty you go. Good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that's opened the door for like friend sitcoms. But um, If I had to choose one of those, what should I watch? Friends, uh, bro. Yeah, friends. Every day and twice on Sunday. Honestly, <laughs> friends, no. you can jump in. You know, follow follow whichever season. Yep. Um, yeah, agree. Definitely agree there, Spencer. Uh, you do need to watch uh, both of them though okay. uh, at some point. <laughs> no. Uh, next question. Uh, so we'll go back to Spencer. Uh, so the deeper one. So first one, most memorable movie you saw in cinemas? Okay, so I think first thing comes to mind is Interstellar. Just because mm. I went and saw it, I got out of school one night, as Charlie said, we were in boarding school, got out of school one night, said I was going to dinner, blatantly <laughs> went to Macquarie and watched Interstellar yeah. with my stepdad and I was blown away. Um, also, I think Infinity War comes to mind because yeah. like, yeah. obviously I was in a full cinema for that and walked out and everyone was like, what just happened? Yeah, that uh, I, I definitely agree with both. Interstellar blew my mind both. The Hans Zimmer's score in that, as well as like the story <laughs> itself, was insane. And agree, Infinity War is one of the great cliffhangers. No spoilers, um, but yeah, those are some great ones. Charlie, mine most was memorable. A, movie. Mine was a Nolan as well. Um, in Year Six, um, my parents organised a birthday party where I could take twenty mates to go see Inception um, in Gold Class. Actually, mm. twenty of my mates. Um, and Must be nice. it opened, <laughs> that was the first, Must Nolan, be very nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the first Nolan movie I'd seen. And just, I mean, the visuals in that just mm. take your breath away. You think of that hallway scene with Gordon oh. Levitt chasing that bloke and crazy everywhere. But, um, in saying Marvel, <clears throat> I think, um, I think Endgame as well. You know that that yeah. portal scene, just oh. and you know oh the scene God. where Cap Cry picks up the ha- um, the hammer and yeah, everyone's reactions oh. in the cinema was just absolutely absurd. Yeah, so so good. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen Avengers, watch it right now. Um, <laughs> next question: fastest TV show binge, Spencer. Uh, so this one I think is dark for me. Mm. I watched in just over a week. How many oh, episodes? Twenty eight. <laughs> how many? How long is each episode? Forty to fifty minutes. What? Oh my God. This was in the height some... of lockdown oh, okay. two point oh. Nice. Um, Those are some look, serious numbers. It's no there. excuse, I guess. But twenty eight <laughs> episodes in about eight or nine days. Wow, that's, unbelievable. That's great. And was it worth it? Yes. We, okay. I'll be talking a bit more about it later. Great. Mm. Love it, Charlie. Mine, I'm not a massive TV guy, but one that comes to mind recently was Bodyguard with Richard mm. Madden. Um, mm. I think it was eight or nine episodes, about an hour each. Yeah. Um, I think I got through that in maybe a day and a half. Yeah. There were, there were a nine, day and a half? Yeah, a day and a half maybe. Wow. Yeah. So, um, cracking that, show. If that, you, if that's you phenomenal. It's a great show. Um, it's on Netflix if you haven't seen it. Really good. Richard Madden. Uh, next question. One movie you think everyone needs to see? Zodiac. Mm, nice. David Fincher. Yeah. Don't think it gets enough praise, but it yeah. is unbelievable. It's so good. What um, a cast, man. One of the – based on a true story, isn't it? Yes. Yes. One of the um, unsolved mysteries and David Fincher at his prime for sure. Um, really good film. Charlie? 
I, if you've got a bit of time, I went with The Thin Red Line by Terrence Malick. Mm. I think um, if you're into war films, that is, you've got a cast with like Sean Penn, George Clooney, Jim yep. Caviezel, Adrian Brody, and these are all actors before their prime when they're just yep. starting out. Yep. It's, a, it's a long one if you have the time, but I think the emotion and the weight and that is just unparalleled in my mind in terms of war films as well. But yeah. if you have the time, definitely watch it. Um, it or alternatively, if you want to see the shittest movie that you have ever seen <laughs> and one memorable like that, watch Norbit. With <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say The Room. You go watch The Room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you want, to, if oh, you want a memorable, <laughs> if you want a memorable movie, um, just go watch Norbit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. Yeah. Um, Final question, TV show that you're watching at the moment. Uh, so, obviously, Yellowstone, which you touched on mm-hmm. last episode, Michael. Yep. Succession for me at the moment is the number one. Yeah. Best yep. show on television, Definitely. hands down. Definitely. Um, just a quick update on Yellowstone. I have finished the entire thing in two weeks. You're a sick, averaging, sick man, man. Averaging 180 <laughs> minutes per day. Uh, it's pretty disgusting. There's no but, colour um, in your skin. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's not. I haven't left pale, the house in days. Pale. Uh, it's really good. And Succession is phenomenal. So mm. definitely one to watch. Charlie? I'm actually with my dad watching Chuck um, with Zachary Levy. Do you know from you know Zachary Levy from Shazam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Before the one Shazam, where he's, he's, yeah, 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 he's, he's like a secret, a secret agent. Yeah, secret brother. agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so he gets, he gets um, accidentally implanted with like a... Um, a government device that yeah. lets him he's the smartest man in the world sort yeah. of thing. Really, really good show. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I um I used to always see that on Fox Eight. Haven't seen it myself. Fox eight. Yeah. Shout out to Fox. <laughs> yeah, Fox Eight. <laughs> um, WWE no, that, Raw. That's WWE great, Raw on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, so now we're going to get into No Time to Die. So, um, as always, we're going to be talking about some big spoilers. So, if you haven't seen it, uh, we will give you some recommendations of what we thought of the movie. Um, so, firstly, I'll just say I thought it was really good. Um, you know, Hans Zimmer scoring it, incredible cast, um, directed by Kerry Fukunaga, who is very underrated, and mm. the action was incredible, set pieces were incredible. There are some kind of um, plot holes, which we'll get into, but so good to be watching Bond again mm. and final uh, Daniel Craig Bond film. So um, I loved it. Go see it. What did you guys think in one to two sentences? Yeah, well, I mean, I just, first of all, I just thought it was great to be in a cinema again watching a movie of this mm. scale. Like yeah. it's been a long time. And yeah, we saw Eternals and um, obviously we know how I feel about that movie. <laughs> but um, yeah, just a movie of this scale to see again was really special especially with two of my good mates yeah um (laughs) the synopsis for this film probably bond goes on his last adventure that's Mm. about it for me like yeah at its core that's basically it that's a that's a perfect synopsis i think um you know he's he's at it again and he it's his uh final comes um, out of retirement again (laughs) yeah for one last multiple times one last dance (laughs) one last he was off the grid apparently that's right (laughs) Uh, Charlie, one, one to two sentence synopsis. Michael, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I had a really nice, well-rounded answer for you last night. Mm. Um, <laughs> I might have had a few beers last night and <laughs> tampered with my notes. Yep. So I summed it up with a quote from Mr. White from Spectre, actually. <laughs> okay. Where he says, <clears throat> You're a kite dancing in a hurricane, Mr. Bond. <laughs> And what I think I meant by that when I wrote it at 4 a.m. last night yeah. was you see a side of Daniel Craig where he's really thrown to the deep end. Like there's a lot of things coming his way, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, a villain that is pretty different to ones that he's encountered mm. before. Yep. Um, a new threat, I think, globally that he hasn't encountered before that's pretty prevalent when we're looking at the context of the world that we live in today. Yep. Um, and, you know, ultimately... Yeah, I mean, he's he's just, like I said, thrown into the deep end. So For sure. I think if I was to sum it up in one sentence, um, watching a different side of Bond thrown into the deep end, that's how I'm going to say it. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, definitely go see it if you haven't already. Support your local cinema. Um, I think in New South Wales here today, we've just got another Discover voucher, so you can watch it for free if you Ooh, want to. I did not know that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, go see it. Uh, all righty. So... 
let's get into it. We're going to be breaking down the plot, as I mentioned earlier, and we're going to be talking through some of the key plot points and giving our view on them. So, um, as I mentioned, you know, the filming, the cinematography, the action scenes, the set pieces, the score were incredible. Um, the film opens with the villain Safin, played by uh, Rami Malik, and uh, Madeline, who's played by uh, Leah Saidu. She is a kind of teenager, a child at this point, um, yep. and they're in Norway, and it's just the most incredible opening. Like, the filming is phenomenal. Um, you know, there's this frozen lake, and it's really built up um, Safin as a, as a big villain. What did you guys think of the opening? Yeah, certainly. Um, I rewatched this with my dad, and it certainly had like a bit of a horror movie feel to it mm, in that first scene. Very suspenseful. Um, when he appeared in that window, my dad actually jumped out of his seat <laughs> when his clown face was peeking <laughs> yeah. through. Um, but yeah, I thought it set it up perfectly, and that Dan Tamagotchi just. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tamagotchi. Dan Tamagotchi. That was really a downfall. Yep. Yeah. It really. Man, played in I um, I really enjoy the opener. I thought yep. the cinematography was probably the best in the film and this at this stage. You know, yeah. you those extreme wide shots of Safin, you know, trudging through the snow, mm. making his way, and then you know uh, the over the shoulder shot of um, uh, Leah Sadu's character, um, with her mother and. Um, you see Safin slowly approaching. Um, yeah. I thought the suspense, um, the whole the whole movie, you're on the edge of the seat. But I think oh, when you, you've, you see him coming, and you know, it's, it's shot just, really it's well. Building, yeah, it's, it's building. shot so well. Um, and actually, the cinematographer thought it was a good point. Was Linus Sandgren, and he did uh, American Hustle, La La Land, and First Man. So if you like the style of those films, you definitely mm. get that in this one. Uh, Madeline. Nearly kills Safin, takes him out onto the lake, and she actually falls in, and he uh, saves her, which comes into the movie later. <laughs> they become connected. Correct. <laughs> Bizarre. Um, but then we go straight into um, fast forward to present day. Um, oh, sorry, five years a- ago. Um, yes. Madeline is in Matera, Italy, with Bond. He's like retired now. Um, the again, the cinematography is incredible. Um, and they're like kind of really in love and just enjoying that that freedom. Um, what did you guys think of that sort of part of the movie where he's in retirement with her? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, I look. I, I don't mind the relationship. I yep. think it was a bit rushed from Spectre. It was a bit yeah, rushed. I think it was a bit rushed. I think. Um, it might have been a job for them to initiate in Skyfall and then mm. by that stage, I think it's a two-movie job. Mm, yep. So to see them just all really comfortable, you know, driving the DB5 along the highway, yeah. I think probably would have worked out better if they'd bit, started a bit, bit earlier. Developed a bit more, yeah. But, um, oh, don't get me wrong, like the cinematography and the location was superb, Yeah, you know, and I think the way they tied in that burning of the – um. Secrets. Oh, I think yeah. It was really, really good where they're just lighting cool. it up. It was pretty that cool. Was really that cool. was really good. Could I just add that that festival does not exist? <laughs> does really? it not exist? No, they I wanted to know. Yep, they made it up purely for the plot of the film. There you go. Burning <laughs> the secrets. Secrets. It's not okay. a real festival. Wow, that's a fiery take. I there. hate the film. <laughs> <laughs> well, that changes everything. <laughs> I'm sorry um, to ruin it, but yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, I definitely agree. I think, um, you know, they could have developed that a bit more. Um, and then the whole, we obviously get to the point where, um, uh, we, so then we get to the point where, uh, Madeline wants Bond to kind of let his memory of Vespa like <laughs> die off. And l- before we get into this, so, um, she died in Venice. Yes, she did. Yes. Why is her tomb in Matera? I think she, was she Greek? Is Matera in Greece? No, no, no it's in Italy. Italy. Oh, God. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah why, 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 uh, so, why is she there? That's the first question. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, anyway, so then he, <laughs> any, I don't have that much of a problem with it. It's just a bit weird. Uh, it's a bit of a coincidence. <laughs> Look, if they want to go to a location, that's where her tomb will be. <laughs> As with the fake festival. <laughs> um, yeah, so he goes to visit her tomb. Um, and then he gets kind of ambushed by a spectre. Um, it explodes in his face. I thought it was really cool that we heard the ringing of the bomb. Like it's the first time that we've actually seen his perspective from like a big explosion like that. Yeah. Can I just say there was um, when Bond is 
addressing Vespa's tomb, mm. um, when they played the Vespa theme from Casino Royale, yeah. Spencer and I looked at each other and just said, man. man, that is well done. I looked deep into his eyes. The piano. <laughs> that is, oh, it is the best, so that is the best single piece of music from dun, the Bond dun, films. Dun, in dun, yeah. dun, dun, <laughs> it's so dun. good. Um, and then, yeah, we, we've obviously all seen it in the trailers or, or you know, it was very widely shown. Uh, but we get those epic kind of um, chase scenes and action scenes where, you know, Bond's jumping off a bridge, he's dodging cars. It's really well done. The action is incredible. Um, and Kerry Fukunaga, if you don't already know, he did True Detective. Um, so, you know, we really get that kind of gritty action in this kind of first scene. Um, and then he just goes opening just opening up another my martini. martini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these martinis, they're really Shagan good. Not I, my suit is feeling great. Does it look as like well. yeah. I give it down. <laughs> Michael, you look amazing today. Thank man. you. You too, Charlie. Um, yeah, so then he feels like betrayed by Madeline. I thought it was really good because, um, you know, he's clearly got all these like kind of attachment issues. He's got a lot of baggage. He does have a lot of baggage. Yeah. Um, noisy man. Yeah, quite noisy. Um, <laughs> and. Fun fact, uh, so he then takes his uh, DB5 and they try and escape the city. Um, fun fact, the set crew for No Time to Die actually had to pour thousands of litres of soda on the streets uh, in Italy because the stone was like too soft. To make the, it slide. To make the cars slide and be able to wow. turn easily. So they literally poured soda just to drive through the town. Um, and I thought the bulletproof glass scene was really cool. Like, mm. yep. I reckon, honestly, man, like the scene where, you know, Madeline's begging Bond to, to move or yeah. do something and you, you've got that that close-up of the bullet penetrating the bulletproof glass, like oh. getting closer and closer and he's just st- st- sitting there doing nothing. Literally. So yeah. He's like, okay. Yeah, he's like, okay. <laughs> up up there with most tense scenes in the film, I reckon. For yeah. sure. Cool. And like- it's it's realistic like this villain who by the way is um he's introduced to us as like the henchman he's played by uh dale bensala uh, he's got a bit of a cyborg thing going on um like he like it's it's a bit realistic that like they're not just going to stop shooting like just because he's in a bulletproof glass like nope. just you keep going you don't stop um <laughs> okay you so stop that, when he's dead yeah exactly um then fast forward five years, I think it is. Yeah. So, yeah, he yeah, leaves her yeah, on the train. Yeah, you're right. Uh, leaves her on the train. Which I thought was a pretty emotion. Her acting in that scene as she's yeah, that was pacing so up the good. train. Leah Sadu, really good actress, man. Great performance. Mm. Um, and as you would, you would break down if you were having to leave because of all of that. Yep. Um, yeah, so fast forward five years, we find ourselves in a really awesome like sort of virus heist if you call it. Mm. Um, well shot. Well shot. Really, really well, shot. well shot. Really well Guys shot. Guys walking down the side of buildings. Um, they show us uh, this project Heracles uh, where the Russian scientist played by David Denchik uh, gets introduced to us um, and we kind of get open to this plot of the nanobots. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> just to give some context before we break it down. The nanobots are supposedly coded to an individual's DNA so that it's lethal for them uh, and their relatives but harmless to any other people. Um, Perfect. Great technology. Look, <laughs> look, what did we think of the nanobots, guys? Look, like, I just, it was summed up pretty well in that scene on the boat where they were kind of interrogating that scientist and mm. they were like, explain it to me in layman's terms like what this is and he just said it's perfect and i'm like <laughs> you imagine the writers in the room yeah. and just being like what is the perfect thing where we can get to a point like <laughs> yeah. this is what nano <laughs> <laughs> the writers it's are perfect. like perfect wait like aren't, aren't scientists gonna like quiz us no 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 it's perfect no. right and perfect. not to mention bond had uh he later gets an emp watch you know like, yeah you'd assume that maybe the Man, EMPs but he could does disable that, the <laughs> no, nanobots. But like, at the same time, you look at the impact that it has later on in the film with someone. Mm. If he was to do that to himself, he's going to blow himself up, man. Like, surely. Yeah. Yeah. He's, that's- he's going to hurt himself. Exactly. And don't um, do that. Anyway, do, so a quick little that. theory as well. Apparently, it was meant to be a virus instead of nanobots. Mm. Um, and they rewrote the film because of COVID. That's a bit of a theory going around. Ooh. Which kind of makes a bit of sense because the nanobot seems a bit kind of half done. 
That would have been hot from um, MGM to put a virus in. Yeah, mm. yeah, it would have been very topical. Um, anyway, so then we fast forward to James Bond's second retirement. He's in Jamaica, <laughs> living on a boat, living it up. Um, he's really enjoying himself. He meets up with Felix, uh, played by Jeffrey Wright. We obviously know him already. Um, and he's got a bit of a mate, uh, Logan Ash. Billy Maggins. Can't man. stop smiling. Good actor. Yeah, he, really he good keeps actor. smiling. Um, and we're introduced to Nomi, who is the successor of the 007 number. Uh, what do we think of the uh, retirement down there in uh, Jamaica? Look, man, he's obviously got no clue how to go off the grid. Yeah. Because he gets found, found every time. Yeah. And look, I love Felix. I thought the role he played, particularly in Casino Royale, was really good. He brought him back in. Yeah. Yep. But like, if I was just like a general moviegoer, I would not know who this guy is. Yeah. yeah. Nor yeah. would I remember his name. Yeah. Mm. So for me, it was like, I knew what was going on. My dad personally was like, oh, there's a lot going on here. I don't know. Like, yeah, that's a good point. Like, we obviously haven't seen. Is he even in Spectre or Sky? No, he's not. So he's in Casino yeah. or Al Quantum and, that, and skip Spectre and now he's back. Yeah. yeah. So. so, yeah, that that's a good point there. Yeah. Um, uh, so Felix obviously mentions about this whole virus heist. Um, Need some help from his good mate Bond. Then they have to go to Cuba to get the virus. Hmm. Uh, and we're introduced to Paloma, played by Ana de Armas, who is a moment of phenomenal. Silence. Yeah, moment of Man. silence. Well uh, done, Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> so she is a great part of the movie. I thought that she was really good. Yeah. Um, Honestly, man, one of the better performances like, like of the movie. Uh, yeah, for sure. She's a phenomenal actress. Um, she's really come through in this film. Um, so they, Paloma and Bond, uh, infiltrate a Spectre meeting for Blofeld's birthday, who's obviously in jail at the time. This is where I started to get a bit lost. Like, mm. um, I thought it was really cool fight scenes and stuff, but um, like what was going on? <laughs> well, well, yeah. Well, uh, like to begin with, when the... Um Obviously, when everyone starts dying, mm. um, wouldn't wouldn't the henchman die? Because he's Spectre, or is he? That's what I thought. Yeah. It's just well, like it rains down upon, and then those he somehow people. makes it out alive. Like I thought it was pretty rushed. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong; the action was incredible. Um, yeah. I thought yeah, it was a good chase. Yeah, like unreal. And I think, like you said before, Paloma's performance was unbelievable. That yeah. little scene where she's she's introduced as like this really like. Bubbly, I've only had one week, two weeks of training, yeah, and then just yeah. starts kicking people and <laughs> yeah. just kicking operating ass. in MP5K and just yeah. shooting oh, people yeah. nonstop. Like, no, it's really. She looks good doing it. Also, yeah. Apparently, Daniel Craig picked mm. her, um, hand picked her from Knives Out. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, actually, oh. I wonder why. She, I wonder why. Yeah, no, I, I thought that that was a great Because it was an incredible performance <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and she didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. the scientist obviously reprograms the nanobots, kills all of Spectre apparently, um, every single member. They're all in Cuba. Yep. Uh, they're not spread <laughs> they're across all there the world. Already. They're there for a party. Really no, 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 good. they're all yeah. there in one place. Um, and they all die. So except for Bond, he's fine. Convenient. Yep. Um, very convenient. Uh, and then we then, um, oh, just quickly as well. Um, so another thing that kind of annoyed me was that they were drinking mid fight. Like that was a bit much. <laughs> Didn't he pour, yeah, he poured them a glass and yeah. he was like, what are we drinking to or something? Yeah. And it was like Bombay Sapphire or some huge <laughs> brand. <laughs> Clearly oh. a product placement. Probably yeah. paid like it's 30 a, mil just for like that. actually can- just on product placement. They actually reshot this film because the Nokias they used in the original cut were out of date. And they no wanted way. to keep the Nokia deal. Nokias. So they reshot the movie with the new Nokias. Oh my god, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> the budget on this bizarre. Apple, <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah. Spotify. No, no, Spotify. Um, yeah. So fast forward. Um, we obviously find out that uh, Logan Ash is a double agent, and big uh, part of the movie kills Felix Leiter. Mm. What do we think of that? About that part, man. I um, honestly, it was it. it wrench your heart because you don't know if he's going to make it out because yeah. they have that little scare where he's, he's holding him bleeding and then there's that explosion on the side and everything's yeah. sort of disorientated and then he's dragging through the water and they're talking and then he ends up passing away but um i thought it was a really really good way that it sort of rounded out daniel craig's character arc i yeah. mean you've got 
Um, almost all ties to Vesper and Casino Royale done. You know, Vesper herself, Renee Mathis in Qantas, um, M in Skyfall, Mr. White and Spectre, and now Felix. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I thought it was a really, really good way that they've um, sort of rounded it out. But um, definitely one of the more emotional parts of the movie, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Your Martini. I yeah, also Martini. thought it was like a bit on the nose that they let Felix – like drown like how Vespa died. Yeah. And I saw like a Didn't real parallel. Up, like they, they did. Like he kind of just faded off in the water like she did in the mm. elevator. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, it's a nice callback. Like I cared about his death, but like I'm not sure if like everyone else did. Yeah, mm. I agree. I think you really have to have um, seen all of the Craig Bond films to kind of feel the full impact of that. But I definitely agree. It did. Um, He's literally lost everyone. He's Yeah. Yeah. The most oh, he's about tortured to. person in the planet. Um, so <laughs> he did get his balls absolutely swashed by a rope, <laughs> which, but I'll get to. But let me just say, <laughs> I want to. Yeah. I'll just say it now. So his say balls it, got, were obliterated. Were, were obliterated in Casino Royale. I'm, I'm very surprised he was able to have children. How did he this have is, kids? Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, we'll get to that later. No, there's no way. That, look, I've, obviously there's modern technologies which allow for such a thing to happen. Yeah. Uh, yes. There's no way Indeed. his testicles are in good working order. <laughs> no, no, good no. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so fast forward, uh, Safin visits Madeline um, in her psychological practice. Uh, he gives this like weird speech about them, their lives being connected because he saved her at yep. the start of the movie. Mm. Also, Safin is what, 20, 30 years older than her? Hasn't yeah. aged. Ha- Has no. not He's aged today. <laughs> an extra, one extra grey hair. It's the scarring. <laughs> it's the yeah. scarring. True, he doesn't age. <laughs> Um, anyway, then we get to Bond getting infected from um, Madeline when they go visit Blofeld mm. in the jail. What did we think of the scene with Blofeld? Yeah, so I, I rewatched the Blofeld scene last night and I thought it was, with the soundtrack, it was pretty amazing as he was moving towards, you know, he's in that seat and he was yeah. kind of being, but I also thought it was like kind of comical how slow that seat was. Oh, it was so slow. <laughs> like, yeah. It was like for two minutes he was just going. <laughs> just moving. <laughs> yeah. Like in a comedy movie you'd turn the soundtrack off and just like yeah. hear him moving yeah. forward. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> and it was, it was like, look, yeah. I'm happy for him to die. I think he's a better villain than Rami Malek. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, all definitely. 100%. Up. But like. We never found out how he broadcasted to the party. Mm. Yeah, from the jail. I think that was skipped yeah. over a bit. Which is a pretty big, like, plot. Bro, mm. does he want to pronounce Madeline correctly as well? He <laughs> what does he say? say? Madeline, like, Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's like 30 beers deep or something, yeah, trying to read know, the what? Bible He's or on something. something. Like, Madeline. Um, Madeline. <laughs> yeah, and then, so he obviously dies. We only get um, Christoph Waltz in the movie for like five minutes, which mm. is a bit disappointing. But yeah. anyway, that that we we you just skip turn past around that. and he's dead. Like yeah, mm, and and Bond no, yeah, not, not, <laughs> not really not really a send off. Like no, you're just no, no, like no, oh, oh shit, he's and dead. Like the die blow fell die, but bizarre. He really when, bizarre. When is Craig ever to like yeah, say no, like, yeah, yeah, like die. honestly, I think, <laughs> that, I think that Bond, was, I think he went a bit off like off brand there, Bond. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. from I, cool. I think that's from the original novels. Um it's a quote in the novels, right. but Craig's Bond would never say that. <laughs> it is a bit, it is definitely a bizarre scene. Yeah. And yeah, we'll move on. Yeah. So <laughs> so now Bond is infected with the um the virus. Oh sorry, the, na- the nanobots. Uh <laughs> So and he, he can't get rid of them according to Q. No, you no, know you can't. Once you have them, you, you can't you, you can't get, get rid of them. them. <laughs> um, what did he say? He said something fun. Like Q said something funny about the nanobots. He's like, you don't get them for Christmas or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh. I mean that would be a great gift if I got those for Christmas. Um, <laughs> so fast forward, uh, we go to Norway, uh, back to Madeline's family's home, um, and Bond finds Madeline with a daughter. Um, ma- ma- Mathilde. <laughs> Mathilde. Mathilde. So, Mathilde. So we find uh, Mathilde. Madeline with a daughter called uh, Mathilde, uh, and she says that it's not his, uh, which uh, we'll get to later. What did we think of that? Okay, look, I believe I took that at face value mm, when she me said too. that. But apparently, like, you were just meant to think that it was. Like, because at the end, I didn't really realize, like, Bond just kind of acknowledged that, no, it is your daughter. 
Mm. Mm. So when she said it's not, I'm like, okay, moving on. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I completely not. believed it. Don't, I was like, okay. don't tell me it's not if it is. Yeah, like, and then um, he like you know is making her food and stuff like being this like dad. Yeah, I was dad. like, what's going on? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't like Pretty it. Pretty uncomfortable. Oh, like, I mean, just yeah. Yeah, very very different yeah. sort of betrayal, but for you know. sure, I would certainly leave the house on the on the lake after something like that happened to me. Yeah, probably <laughs> I would not, not go I back. Would not <laughs> bring my Pretty new dramatic. daughter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree. Um, so then we get, in my opinion, one of the coolest uh, action scenes of the movie. Mm. Um, they obviously get found by uh, Safin's new henchman, Logan Ash. In the woods. Um, in that forest woodsy scene and it's like misty. It is awesome. The cars are flying everywhere. Yep. Um, I thought it was awesome. Was awesome, but like why'd they take the um, Toyota Land Cruiser? Yeah. Don't was take it a, the- uh, Don't oh, take the Aston, don't take don't Aston. Take Aston Martin. No, 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 no. To be fair, to be fair, when they're, they're, the they're, Martin, they're trudging it through there. riverbeds and stuff, you, you, like the Aston Oh, you need a four-wheel drive. Yeah, you, 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 of course. Would you not take the car? Look, it's a two-seater. The faster car. But would you not take a faster car- Matil can sit on a That potentially has gadgets and guns in it? Yeah. I mean- Yeah, I don't- That was weird. I think it was a bit of a weird choice. Also- um. Nomi, she's the new 007. She, so far behind. So though. far behind. Where is she? <laughs> Wait, get here now. We need you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was still uh, tracking I'm you. I'm pretty sure the extended cut, she's over I in thought- the bushes in a ghillie suit somewhere. <laughs> Man, I thought, I, thought the, um, I thought the scene was unbelievable. And I'll say this a bit later on, but with um, the death of Logan Ash, I think like they need to – Bond films – rely just as much on the henchman as the main yeah. villain, especially in this 100%. case. Batista. Um, so Batista was good. Dave Batista was good in Spectre. You know, he was that really imposing figure, actually put up a fight. Daniel Craig killed um, Billy Magnuson's character way too quickly. So here. easily. Um, so easily. And, you know, there's that cheesy line of, oh, I had a brother, his name was Felix. You know, he just drops that and drops a car on him. But anyway, I, I think definitely um, the I henchman. That was, like, yeah. You think of Red Grant in from Russia to um, from Russia with Love, and you think of Odd Job from Goldfinger. Yeah. You know they're synonymous with their henchmen, and I think Logan definitely deserved a bit of a, a bit of a you know put up a fight. Yeah, um, and so. like these henchmen are meant to like match Bond. Like they yeah. they shouldn't be no, killed they're so basically, easily. Mm. They're basically stormtroopers. Yeah, pretty and much. Like, yeah, literally, and like. You were never like concerned with fighting Logan Ash. It was like, oh, he's definitely going to kill him, and he did. So, <laughs> yep. um, Ladies. that was an interesting point. Yeah, obviously, Nomi takes ages. Um, oh, sorry, I was still <laughs> tracking um, <laughs> on my, my target. Oh, yeah, well, like I killed him, so yeah. good on you. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Safin takes uh, Matilde and Madeline like as hostages. They fly away. Um, and then we get to the kind of final uh, part at Safin's headquarters. It's a missile base converted into a nanobot factory slash poison garden. Um, I thought it was they they kind of allude to it that his family was like chemical chemists, um, you know, studying poisons. I thought it was a bit weird. Like, and also, who are his followers? Like, where has he got all these resources? He acts alone. Uh, uh, but he can kill the entirety of Spectre. They're a public company. The oh, henchman okay. from Spectre just jumps on board. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. What is going Like, who, who's supporting him? Who's funding his operation? How old is he? <laughs> can so tell yeah. me so, he's, so he's not connected to Spectre, right? <laughs> no. 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 Because um, Spectre killed his family. Oh, of course. Yeah. So, yes. He's, yes. so he's, he's, so he's killed them all. He killed, it was a personal vendetta okay. from him. So this isn't and a Spectre then, funded. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, personal vendetta to kill Spectre, but then he takes Madeline and the daughter because of Mr. White's connection as well. Yeah. Then, uh, so, um, Matilde just bites his hand and he's like, oh, okay, leave then. And he lets her go. Serious be- uh, hand bite. What is Serious. going on? <laughs> he, like, wants to kidnap them and then he just lets them run around. Just lets her run around the, <laughs> around the bunker. Yeah, around the poison garden. Uh, Keep safe. Yeah, and then uh, so Safin wants to kill millions of people. He doesn't say who, what or why. No. 
No, just for no reason. Yeah, just to we'll Thanos just cool cleanse people. half the universe. Yeah, just yeah. a bit of a cleanse. He wants. He, he's, I think he says he wants it a bit tidier. Right. Yeah. Um, there you go. With the nanobots, of course. Yeah. But so the nanobots target certain people. Who's he targeting? We don't get told. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I thought that was yeah, they've copied Infinity War blatantly. <laughs> I thought it, I thought it could have gone down the route of Skyfall, where he's trying to kill you, you know all obviously all his intelligence agents, mm. but it's just random killing. Yeah, That's it's bizarre. so random. He d- like I would have liked a bit of a motive there. Mm. Yeah. Um. So then we um kind of get to the sort of finale of the movie. Um. We're trying to destroy all these nanobots because they could kill everyone. We don't know who. Um, and so Bond has to stay on the island to open the missile silo doors mm. for missiles to destroy them from a nearby like navy ship. Um, and he calls in the missile strike, and we're kind of at this you know classic Bond. He's got to escape. What's going on? What did you guys think of that sort of um, finale? Yeah, look, I I kind of I the ending of this movie was kind of spoiled for me, so I knew where it was going. Um, but just the way it got there, I thought it was a bit bizarre. Mm. Q just being like, yeah, the me- mechanics to unlock these doors are very hard and intricate. Like you have to do like a number of things. And <laughs> yeah, he just pulls just his lever yeah. and he just goes bang, bang, I bang. That was, I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed yeah, that. I mean, it's funny, but it's also like these people aren't convenient. using this old bunker with Super like convenient. some serious high tech downstairs. Yeah. Um, and then obviously I thought it was, it was cool though. Um, you know, him killing all of Safin's uh, remaining guards. Um, we get that cool kind of second, um, you know, classic James Bond gunshot in that tunnel. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought that was a nice that was little that um, was good. throwback. Um, b- but then there's an awesome scene where um, he's going up a stairwell and it's shot all as one take. Mm. So the stairwell scene Mate, is unreal. Mate, my favourite my favorite so scene in the these, entire movie, that long yeah. take. Unbelievable. These guys are flying at him. And um, Kerry Fuganaga did a huge long take in True Detective and I thought that he was going to do one here. It like that, that getaway scene. Yeah, and it was oh, unreal. Man, it shows like that, that long take, it just shows you how what – what Craig's brought to the brought to the character in terms of the brutality, like mm. we haven't seen that in Bond Very before, brutal. like just absolutely murdering people left, right, and center. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's unbelievable. That's kind of yeah. like how it started his whole thing as well. Like the start of Casino Royale started with him, yeah, just drowning a bloke in the drowning, sink. Yeah. yeah, like that black and white. So I'm pretty sure they blacked and whited out because there was blood everywhere. Like, they yeah, had yeah, to. and that was his first ever kill. So first, he's obviously yeah. more brutal. To return to yeah. that, unbelievable for yep. sure. Um, and I thought, so then after all those guards, he kills, uh, Primo, the one eyed dude with his watch via an EMP. Yep. I thought that as well, like you said earlier, Charlie, very underutilized henchman yep. kills him very easily. Yeah. Yep. After all they've that. got, bro, they've got to moving forward. They need to make sure that that henchman is on par, especially when got Rami, to be big. like Rami is in a, particularly imposing villain. No. You know, he doesn't offer much of a fight. No. You need to make sure that Primo in this case is actually putting up a fight and Bond just easily murders him, like oh, easily. So yeah. easy. I mean, yeah, there aren't a lot of Batistas out there, but it's mm. like, you know, I was actually quite frightened of him yeah, when he like, killed the guy at the Spectre meeting. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. so scared. Just poke his eyes out. Yeah. 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 yeah, and there wasn't even anything like that to kind of create this danger of this no. guy. No, So that was a bit underdone as well. Um, so then Safin ambushes Bond. You know, you think that he's opened the missile silo doors um, and it's all sweet and he's killed everyone um, and he infects him with the nanobots program to kill Madeline and Matilde conveniently. Yes, just mm-hmm. those two. Only those Only two those humans. Two. Uh, despite saying he wanted to kill millions earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Bond kills Safin, like breaks his arm, uh, kills him, sh- sorry, shoots him with heaps of bullets very easily, another villain. Very <laughs> just easily, gone. Look, just hey, gone. Bang, done. bang, look. done. <laughs> That's him. Um, and then we get to one of the most emotional parts of the movie. Um, so because he's infected with the nanobots that will kill Madeline or Matilde if he touches them. Um, so basically, he kind of gets to this point where he'll never be able to see them or touch them. Or why can't you put him in a room separated by glass and see his kids? Yes. <laughs> like, why, can't, why can't you like do bring a, a helicopter study. down? There are fighter planes going over this bunker. Yeah. Mm. I don't I mean, you obviously need a landing strip for that, but like 
Surely. Surely, surely there's an alternative. Surely and cleanly, the MI6 have something <laughs> yeah, in place. Something. A contingency, at yeah. the very least. <laughs> contingency. <Yeah. laughs> like, and, and, like, couldn't they, like, study how to remove them or, like, change them? But Mick, no, I, no, it's I, perfect, no, no, no. I, I don't understand <laughs> Safin's qualm with Bond. Like, I, I know that he hated Spectre and he wanted him to die, but, like. He didn't why, have a qualm. He, he, but why did he have Quam to ruin qualm, everything sake. for Bond? Like, FNR. Well, for no did, reason. Yeah. <laughs> FNR. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, so. That part was a bit silly. Um, but as the missiles are coming down, we get this insane uh, ascent. Mm. The final, final ascent. ascent, man. He's climbing up a ladder. Hans Zimmer, like, at his peak. Oh, yeah. It is very, one of the very, best very Hans good. Zimmer songs very, I've heard. Very, very I feel good. like Hans pulled out all of his old tricks for this one. Yeah. And, like, he knew, a lot he of knew. his soundtrack... Sounds bit like Batman-y. a lot of other movies. Bit Batman But man. I feel like because it's bit Bond, Batman he's tone. kind of just like, yeah, I'm yep. just going to use everything I've got. Yep. Literally. No, nah, I thought I, at, at times there's got a bit Batman y, bit Dark Knight. Yeah, But um, yeah, the final ascent is unbelievable. Track. It's yep. so good. It's so emotional. He's climbing up the ladder. The missiles are coming down. Madeline is on the radio with him and on, a, on an island nearby. Yeah, on a yeah, safe just island a, nearby. A safe island. Yeah, it's far yeah. away. Um, <laughs> Madeline confirms it's his daughter, and I thought that that was. I, I was with it. Like I, yeah. I was happy for him. No, yeah. Um, yeah. he's like tearing up, and he looks into the camera. I thought that was so good. Like, Craig's actually looking into the camera. Um, and yeah, really, all the time in the world. It's his farewell, really. It's yeah. the, no, the that whole scene did it for me, man. The illusions, the consistent illusions to. On Her Majesty's Secret Service, where they go, you have all the time in the world. Or that that whole thing about time, time. I thought that that last line from him was mm. very appropriate. It, was, it was really, really, good. really well executed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so great final ending. Uh, the missiles obviously destroy the island, kill Bond. Huge spoiler if you've come this far. <laughs> 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 Why Just are you wine, forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he. Uh, you know, we get to the um, sort of farewell from all the MI6 agents and they mm. have a bit of a funeral. Yeah. Um, no. Let's hear it, Charlie. Yeah, no, what did like, you think? Honestly, man, like I think <laughs> I think a toast to end Craig's tenure was probably a bit inappropriate. Like I get he was sacrificing himself for the greater good and, you know, not putting Madeline and his daughter at jeopardy. But yeah. Um, I think I would have loved to see, you know, like a pretty emotional scene where Bond's dying in her arms or he's um, he's got one of those big state funerals. You know, in Skyfall, oh, she yeah. sort of, you sort of see M with those um, that the row coffins. of coffins with um, the, the Union Jack um, draped across 100%. them. I would have loved a funeral scene like that. But bury I him, think, bury him yeah. next to Vespa. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh, in uh, Matera. Yeah, in Matera. <laughs> um, but I think I definitely think, uh, like he deserved better than a toast, yeah. man. Like, yeah, 100%. Just a toast. Five films now. He was like, reinstated as well, so it's like you're not off the books to yeah, the point yeah. where he's back in. Yeah, no, we can't celebrate you exactly. Like, he's back and in. like, yeah, so I thought that was a bit kind of underwhelming, but great uh, farewell to Daniel Craig as well. So yes, because of that, uh, we thought we'd just touch on what well, we thought of Daniel Craig as a Bond actor. Um, was he the best so far? Did you think? Okay, I think I think it's pretty like a common thought that whatever Bond you grow up with is the best Bond. Mm, good take. Yeah, great um, take. But like the older people I've spoken to have kind of been like they were really iffy about him at first and then like I think after Skyfall is when it became like, okay, no, this guy is actually better than Connery. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, Daniel Craig, best Bond. Yeah. I Look, I think this bloke came into the role – had all the criticism in the world, yeah. you know, blonde, five foot And all ten, the time in the world. And all the time in the world. <laughs> um, you know, came into the role with a heap of criticism. I mean, so Casino much. Royale, he, his best film, like, hands down. Okay, we'll get um, to that. Defied, yeah, defied <laughs> expectation. Um, I think he showed that Bond was more, you know, more than just being a, you know, ladies' man, you know, suave, but Bond was a character that experienced love and loss and, you know, used these traumas traumas to go to a place that um, helped him save the world day in, day out, and he used that, you know, fuel um, to, you know, just 
Yeah, like I said, save the world. Um, I reckon he, he's the best because, you know, the emotional range that he brought. For and sure. like, I, yeah. like we said earlier, he was brutal. He was brutal. So brutal. But in this film as well, you know, he could be brutal but then he could be a dad and then he could um, – you know, just have that lighter side. And I don't think we've seen that with a Bond before. So yeah. that's why I think that, in my opinion, and like Spence said, we, we've grown up with him. Yeah. He's the best Bond, in For my sure. opinion. Definitely agree. I think, you know, that point of growing up with the Bond is obviously, a, you know, something that you live with and you obviously can enjoy as you're growing up. But mm. definitely I think that Bond was the best um, you know, Casino Royale and Skyfall were some of the best, in my opinion, of the yeah. series. Yeah. Reason being similar to what Charlie said, it's the first time that the character of Bond is actually a real human being. Like, yeah. um, you know, Craig brought in, as you said, this kind of brutal, um, you know, side to things where, you know, if you actually think about who James Bond is, he's his secret agent who's been like shot at poisoned, drugged, he's an orphan, he's lost yeah, everyone he's shocking. ever loved. He would be the most, like, noisy, noisy just man, noisy. Man. He'd be damaged, he'd be noisy. He like, And you see that. He, like, literally, you know, breaks down when Vesper died. He, yeah. um, you know, sees his house where his family grew up. Blown, blown up. Blown away. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, you, and then you see him, like, using alcohol and stuff to, like, deal with it. Like, it's yeah. the yeah. first Bond who's, like, actually a real person. Mm. Also, little plug, I've actually done a YouTube video about why Daniel Craig changed the Bond character forever on YouTube. So uh, if you haven't already, go check it out and I unpack that whole uh, reasoning there. Gun. Absolutely. I'll definitely watch um, it. So, so just quickly, what do you guys think is his best Bond? Casino Royale. Man, it's... You reckon Skyfall, me? I think Skyfall. Oh, I think man. Skyfall has to... Look, I think it's a 1A, 1B type deal. Yeah, yeah they, but I think Skyfall takes the edge. Just, yeah, I think uh, is it Sam Mendes? Still, yeah, oh, like phenomenal. So my good. man, my most iconic Bond scene I think is when I was saying before when he's more emotional when Vespa when he's just, Vespa's just witnessing him kill those um oh, you know, warlords the in, in, <laughs> sitting in, in, in the shower. They're sitting in the shower and he just <laughs> comes in. No, I'm being serious, bro. Like he he comes in and you know he sees that she's in trouble and no other Bond would do this, Mika. Nah. Like. He comes in, sits down with her, like, you know. And what does he do? And he sucks her fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Bizarre. But, yep. he, you know, the intention was there. And, um, I like, I think for the, like, like in this film, I think the emotional weight in Casino Royale yep. Yep. is, um, you know, better. For better sure. Than Skyfall. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, at the end of the credits, we get the famous James Bond will return sentence. Uh, so, we've been promised that he's going to come back. Right. Um, so, now that the mantle has been passed on from Daniel Craig, we thought it'd be a good way to kind of discuss who we think the next James Bond will be. Mm. So, we reached out to the Cinemates community. Uh, we got some great <laughs> answers for who, uh, you know, they think will uh, be the next Bond. So, as well as uh, those suggestions... Plus some very detailed quantitative analysis. <laughs> uh, we've you come do up with your research, <laughs> Mr. Stooley. Yeah. We've come up with a list, uh, and we're going to kind of, um, you know, big thanks to everyone who sent uh, their thoughts in. Um, but we're going to go through each of them and kind of talk about whether we think that they're going to play the next Bond, um, and then we'll pick our favourites for who we think will play the character. So just before we do, this is the uh, quantitative analysis coming through. Uh, so I've gone back and seen what age each of the actors were when they first uh, did their first Bond film. Mm. Connery was 31, uh, Lazenby was 30, Roger Moore was 40, Timothy Dalton 41, Brosnan 42, and Craig 38. The average is 37.8 years old. Right. So that will come into what we think. <sighs> yeah. Man. Um, I was look. I was surprised when I saw you had that down. I. Really thought he was like early thirties. Yeah, when he me too. That, was and that Craig you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's fifty three. Yeah, he's fifty three yeah. right now. Like, yeah, pretty amazing. So crazy. Um, so first one, we obviously get promised that James Bond will return. Mm. Lashana Lynch, who plays Nomi, will she be the next Bond? Or Jane, is she a Jane Bond. 
<laughs> nah, she won't. She won't, man. I nah. don't think she will. No, nah, I, um, I think she was just there as a kind of bit of friction for him in this movie. And yeah, I agree. Like, so I don't, ruffle the nah, feathers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't think she'll be back. Henry Cavill, he's 38. Man, it's right on your average. Like, Perfect. it's if, in terms if you of- it If we're on numbers, yeah. But like, <laughs> I mean, if you're a numbers man. This guy, he's man. been in Mission Impossible, uh, yeah. Man from Uncle. He's too he's jacked, been, man. He's been he's in too, too much and he's too I think, jacked. I think he's been in too many action films already and they usually pick someone a bit unknown. more unknown. Unknown, yeah. He's also way too jacked. Like, too he can't jacked. Be yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, to your point, Charlie. What henchman's going to be out of it? It's like, you want you want a henchman like Batista. Henry Cavill would. He'd be great on villain moving forward. He'd be great yeah. on the WWE, I yeah, reckon. Yeah, yeah, on Wednesday night, Monday night. Have <laughs> Arthur and Cena, Mission Impossible. Mm. Oh, great. Pumping um, the hands. Yeah. <laughs> Idris Elba, he's 49. I'd love to see Idris okay, Elba. I think we'd all too love old. Yeah. Too old. Too old, don't Yeah, okay. way too old. Uh, Killian Murphy, bit weak, I reckon. Weak, but yeah, also good. like from what I've seen in Peaky Blinders, I think if we're going for like a noisy Bond, I feel like he could, you know, he's got so much range. He does have a lot and of range. certainly like I could watch him walk in slow-mo all day long. So for sure. I would love to see him. Um, mm. You know, Roger Moore was 45, so maybe Killian Murphy can do it. Mm. Uh, this is one of the big favorites. Uh, third on sports bet for who will play next Bond, Tom yeah. Hardy. He's 44 currently. He'd be cool. Hey, Very cool. If he that? hadn't done Venom. Yeah. If he <laughs> hadn't done Venom, bro. Well, he's tied up with the MCU now. He's a bit tied yeah. up. Yeah. Um, so maybe his scheduling won't allow it. But, his um, publicist uh, needs, yeah, definitely yeah, needs yeah. to get onto uh, that. Yeah. So I don't think he'll actually be able to do it. Um, Michael Fassbender. Mm. I like it. I'd like Could it. be good, man. I'd like Could it. Could be really, really good. Yeah. Bit of like yeah. a, a kind of sick and twisted bond, I, yeah. I would like mm. to see. Next, Richard Madden. My favorite man. Honestly, like I led into this. Yeah. I would love to see. Love it. Love it. He um Bodyguard, like, phenomenal. Bodyguard, phenomenal. Man, on the way back from a trip that I recently had with my girlfriend, I just um I listened to a podcast that he's got with Brian Cox out right now called From Now. Wow. Which is unbelievable. Like- um, and he's just, man, he's a incredible actor I mean, I mean eternals as you said last week was stupidity how how he, how he just bowed ended. out of the mcu <laughs> yeah. but i think um there's no way he's dead <laughs> yeah, he can't be man he can't. he's uh, 35 but i think man he's a seriously good actor yeah and i think he brings as seen in bodyguard that lot of range you know a lot of range and twisted and mm. he can be good and bad and yeah i can think I- with that sorry no. i think with that because he has done Bodyguard, maybe he won't get it because he's already kind of done that action. Um, although he is second on sports bet, so it'll be interesting. Yeah. What do can you I, think? Yeah. Of- can I just say as well, like, I don't think he, without sounding weird, I don't think he's, like, got the sexy The charisma. Pat. Yeah, I agree. He's a bit like, straight. I think yeah. he's honestly a bit of an ugly duckling and mm. I don't think you can make him James Bond. I reckon he's a sort, man. Like the red wedding, that was it for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> true. true I think yeah. he's yeah. True I think he's stuck there. Uh, <laughs> bit of a left field here. Dev Patel. Slum dog. I don't know why we're laughing, but like, <laughs> <laughs> no man. I think Dev Patel would be the best Bond Dev of all Patel. time. Daniel Radcliffe. No, no. Nah. Will Harry Potter His be? His career's over. No. Yeah, I, I don't think he'll do it. I don't it. know. It's tough. It's okay. Th- I feel bad for him. The Woman in Black was a fantastic film. Man, have you seen yeah. Swiss Army Man? <laughs> <laughs> man, <laughs> he's watch Swiss that Army movie. Knife. It is the most stupid film. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Charlie Hunnam. Yeah, would love to see it. I haven't it. seen this. Gun. I think he'd be pretty good. Gun. What? The Gentleman, bro? Like, gentleman. Oh, is, he, is he that he's guy? The, yeah. With, he, the, yeah. He's like, with the glasses. Hey, what's, what's the line? Oh, I can't say it. Play a game. <laughs> with, <laughs> stop fucking around. Oh, good. Play a game with me, Raymond. <laughs> yeah. Play a game. Play a game with me, Raymond. What about... The Rock. No, right, move on. What are He's you doing? 49. Well, I'm not even giving this air time. <laughs> hey. uh, oh. Okay, this is the favorite on sports bet. Really? Personally, I have not seen Umbrella Academy, nah, but neither. Tom Hopper, 36, slightly under the mean. Uh, apparently, <laughs> is he the big dude? Like the big guy? Big on- guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been in Game of Thrones, I think, as well. A uh, bit unknown, so he fits that kind of mold of being a bit lesser known, but. Um, He's really interesting. If you saw a photo of him, you'd know yeah. uh, who he is. He could, like like you said, it, a massive thing is the unknown. Like it bonds unknown. an opportunity yeah. to build a career. So Huge could aspect. Be a massive one. Yeah. Um, Taron Egerton from Rocket Man. Thoughts? Mm-hmm. No, he's done. Haven't seen Rocket Man. 
Yeah. Um, but he's look, in Kingsman. Uh, he's, 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 he's done good. Bro, he's done Kingsman. He's done that. Yeah. He's, he's done Secret he's, Agent. I think he's already fit that. Yeah. Um, George Mackay, 29 from 1917, maybe. Yeah. Bit don't, young. Don't know him, man. Bit young. Yeah. Um, does fit that kind of unknown. What about mold. Will Poulter from We Are the Millers? Will, Will, yeah, Will, Will <laughs> I'm Poulter. just wondering why he's on here, man. Like, <laughs> no, because no, man, he's you in, say that you say, he's Adam Warlock in the MCU now. Yeah, so and he's and Look, he's looking, the guy that got his testicles testicle stung by a spider. By a spider. <laughs> Well, like, and Daniel knows, Craig don't has go chasing no waterfalls. <laughs> yeah, Daniel Craig has no testicles. So, but he no, fits the man, testicle mold. You look, the no, you look at him. I've seen, um, I've seen photos of you, man, prepped for um, Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock. Yeah, he's, he's bro, he's, he's just sort. Like, yeah, he, he's well, looking look, good. If he's in Marvel, then that's it. Like, yeah, he's tied so up. that's he the thing. Be, if you're that, in Marvel, he be, he's tied up. Could be tied up. Uh, Henry Golding plays um, Dry Eyes in, in The Gentleman. The Gentleman he's yeah. in Snake Eyes, which I haven't seen. Dry Eyes. He's kind of that Malaysian British actor. Oh, yeah. Um, he's in he's Crazy, a good villain. Uh, Crazy, Crazy Rich, Rich Asians. Asians. Yeah. Um, he's a bit of a dark horse, I reckon. Yeah. Kind of this suave. Um, that would be an absolute curveball. Would yeah. be a curveball. Man, they could go down the route of a different ethnicity. And, like, yeah. honestly, I would, I'd would, i love to see it. Yep. I think people would be annoyed. But, like, moving forward, I think if you were to cast a guy like Henry Golding or like Idris Elba, it would be brilliant. Like, yeah. They're, they're I, th- cracking I think, I think actors. they're now in the habit of breaking norms yeah. of James Bond. For sure. And, like, yeah. you've killed him. Like, I think, you know, they, they could, could take be, it anywhere. Could they be want. anywhere. Yeah. Um, Tom Holland, he's obviously heavily tied up in the MCU. $126 on sports bet. Tied up by Zendaya as well. Mm. Yes. Mm. With mm. webs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so sure. I don't think he would have the time. No. no uh, way. A bit young as well. This I put this on here. Paul Mescal Man, from Normal, Normal People. Normal People is my favourite show of all time. It is great. Like, you, you obviously don't see that side of Paul where he can be that suave double agent. But in terms of, like, I've, I've been saying the whole podcast, that emotional depth, yeah. he's got it. Yeah, he's got and it. I think he can definitely tap into that. He in terms that. of action, I don't think he can hit it, but, I mean, I can yeah. be... Persuaded. But. Seventy-one dollars on sports bet. Bit of wow. value there, man. Yeah, value. That's better than Tom Holland. That's unbelievable. Um, there you go. Nicholas Holt, thirty-one. Uh, he was in um, Mad Max, The Great. Um, could be an interesting one. Bit young though. Um, reggae Gene Page. I haven't seen Bridgerton. Dude, no, neither have I. And I've seen this guy, yeah, get touted on Jim yeah. Fallon and stuff like that. Yeah, he's big. He's suave. Fourth on sports Fourth. bet. Could Fourth. be very interesting. Not a lot of value there. Yeah. yeah. Um, John Boyega from Star Wars. No. If we're going off Star Wars, no. man, it doesn't do it for no. me. No. Yeah, I don't know. Also, I, sorry, he's a bit young as well. I've so. got nothing to fight for. <laughs> yeah, he he won a Golden he's Globe a- recently for um, or it might have been an Emmy for some portrayal. But yeah, yeah, but I haven't yeah, seen. I haven't seen what he won it for. But um, if we're going off Star Wars, definitely not. Yeah, not sure. Jamie Bell, Billy Elliot, will he be James Bond? <laughs> <laughs> Bond just donning a leotard and oh, just God. <laughs> prancing around. Oh, yeah. There's no way. Dodging bullets. Nah, definitely. Not man, I reckon this is a dark horse. Daniel, Daniel Kaluuya. Kaluuya from Get Out, yeah, he's got some incredible range. Oh, probably a man. bit too well known, probably but probably, revolutionary. <laughs> honestly, probably the best actor on this list. Like, he's um, he is absolutely, no, he's he's got the noms, he's got the award under his yeah. belt. Um, almost you know, too, he's almost too celebrated. Going, yeah, yeah going, too celebrated. going back to your thing, Mick, you've got to be looking at. Someone that's relatively unknown yep. needs Bond to sort of expose themselves in yeah. that range, and like, I mean, yeah, I think he's, I think he's too exposed, I suppose. Said. For sure, um, this is my pick. Okay, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Aaron Taylor Johnson. Mm. Yeah, a lovely kick man. ass. Good will be guy too. James Bond. I'm calling it now. In Tenet, he showed his true colors yeah. of being this like military Mick, person. I'm gonna agree with you, exposition actually. tool. Yeah. Man, I'm I'm gonna change mine from Richard Madden, man. I I, I think Aaron could definitely get it. I'm yeah. gonna call it now. He's he's well known. He played Kick Ass. I think Kick Ass will be James Bond. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit left field, could be a bit too well known, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got um Savages, which is an Oliver Stone movie under his belt. Yep. He's brilliant in that. Um Great. I'm, I'm a massive Aaron Taylor Johnson fan. So yeah. yeah, definitely. Last one on the list, Harry Styles. No. Yeah, look, he's he's doing no. his best to get into <laughs> well, the no, he's, acting. He's sorted now, man. He he's, doesn't need it. Without spoilers, right. he's tied up in the MCU. Like, who on this list isn't tied up in the MCU? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. This exactly. is ridiculous. They don't have anyone to choose. <laughs> yeah, I know. Although, value $151 on Sportsbet. Put Harry a fiver on it. Yeah, chuck, it, chuck a multi on it. 
Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think Aaron Taylor Johnson. Who do you guys think final picks? Um, my, man, mine was Richie Madden, but I didn't even consider Aaron Taylor Johnson. Yep. Um, I didn't realize he's that young as well, man. But, um, yeah, no, I'm going to go with Aaron Taylor Johnson on this one. Nice. For sure. Spencer? Yeah, look, I don't. I don't no, no one particularly jumps out at me from that list, but I feel like to where Bond's going now, I feel like you've killed him. I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to kind of go for like a young Bond. Yeah. Kind of like what they're doing with like Robert Pattinson and the Batman, like go for, for sure. a young Bond who's just learning, maybe even like take him through how he trained and stuff like that. Mm, like I've never seen that before. Yeah, so something like that. Obviously, he can't go for the 23-year-olds if he's a young Bond, but yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, you know, I think that, there's so many great actors out there. They're probably going to go left field. Yeah. It might be someone a bit less um, less known, a bit unexpected. Um, but, you know, there's there's a wealth of, of actors out there to choose from. Um, so I'm really keen to see where they go. All righty. So as we saw in the last episode, uh, we've started the Cinemates Elevator pitch. Uh, my mate Tom recommended the <laughs> 2015 film Burnt. Takes. Enjoy it. Takes. Do you like it? I watched the whole thing last night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was actually all right. Man, it's good. <laughs> it's a good film. It's it's okay. It's definitely I, not even. I'm best. a big it's okay. I, I'm not a, I'm a big foodie, so I enjoyed it. I thought the filming was great. The yep. cast is great. It's yep. a great cast. Who else is in it? Uh Emma Thompson, Sienna Miller. Okay. Um Sienna Miller, heaps man. Daniel Brühl, heaps of people. Yeah. Um but I can understand the 26% rotten tomato yeah. rating. You can. Um, his, his performance is great, Brad Cooper, um, speaking French, being a cook, being an addict. But he spends a whole movie with his arms folded. <laughs> um, That's what he does, that, You'll man. know what I mean. Just speaking angry French. Yeah, yeah, angry French. There's no character development. Um, so it was enjoyable. But um, look. Tom. It Get be- better at what you suggest, <laughs> man. <laughs> no, I appreciate the recommendation, Tom. It was good. I enjoyed it. The filming of the food was phenomenal, but um, character development was off. So yeah, look, I think um, I think for these suggestions, you've just got to not look at Rotten Tomatoes. I yeah, I and tried just not take to. Their I tried not to. And then just like see how you go, and yeah. then check after and be like, yeah, actually, yeah. it wasn't great <laughs> for sure. So I was surprised by Burnt. It was still pretty good, um, but you know, look. I'd love to get some more recommendations. So, the next Cinemates elevator pitch is coming right here from the studio. No, no, I'm in an elevator. (laughs) No, you're not. Uh, Coming from Spencer, apparently he has a phenomenal recommendation that he's been dying to share. So, Spencer, here we go. Hello, Michael. Uh, As you can probably tell by this uh, sombre reggae music that's playing, I am now in an elevator. And just while I'm here, I thought I'd recommend a show that's actually snuck into my top five this year. Mm. This is the Netflix TV show Dark, which follows characters from a fictional German town of Winden as they pursue the truth following a child going missing. They follow connections between four estranged families to unravel a sinister time travel conspiracy which spans several generations. Wow. This show will probably blow you away and if I could compare it to anything, I'd say it's like a Christopher Nolan meets Stranger Things. So needless to say, it's a pretty deadly combo. Give it a go. Wow. Christopher Nolan. That was phenomenal. Well done, brother. (laughs) That's good. That was phenomenal. (laughs) That's good. I'm going to give it a watch. I've heard great things about Dark. I've heard it's one of the better... Netflix originals. Um, so I'll give it a go. We'll see if it's if it's good and if it's better than Burnt. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just one of those shows that will just like sit on your Netflix homepage and you're yeah, just like, no, nah, I'm never watching there. it. But it's always it. on there. Um, okay, I'm keen to watch that. We'll give my verdict in the next episode of Dark. You'll finish in like three days. Just watch man. one season, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a wrap for the episode. <laughs> this is this one's been a bit longer, but nope. there was so much to get through for this Bond. Um, we're really keen to see where it goes. But thanks for listening into this episode of Cinemates, a podcast where a bunch of mates chat about cinema over some drinks. We're in our suits. We've had some martinis. <laughs> Shaking. Shaking not stirred. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, huge thank you to Charlie and Spencer for coming on. Thank Pleasure, you. Mate. Thank you. Absolute treat to have you both on some great yarns there. Uh, So let us know what you thought um, and what you want to hear next in future episodes. If you want to send in a mailbag or do an elevator pitch like Spencer did, uh, send us a DM on Instagram. Otherwise, we'll catch you for the next episode. 
Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Cinemates. If you enjoyed it, you can follow us and leave a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all other major platforms. Also, if you haven't already, check out our Instagram and YouTube channel for more Cinemates content and let us know what you thought of this episode. In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge Australia's first people as the traditional owners and custodians of the land and pay respect to the Camaragal people of the Eora Nation upon whose country Cinemates is based. We honour the storytelling and culture of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities across Australia. Also, in the spirit of chatting with mates, remember it's always important to check in with those around you, whether it's friends, family or colleagues. Sometimes they may be going through a hard time and chatting with them may reassure that they aren't alone. If you or anyone you know is ever struggling, call Lifeline on 13 11 14.